Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Tuesday the 20th of June. I'm reading the Church of England's Common Worship Daily Prayer, even prayer on Tuesday at ordinary time. You'll find it in the eponymously titled book, towards the beginning after prayer during the day, morning evening prayer during ordinary time, evening prayer on Tuesday. Also online at Remus Daily Prayer, the Church of England's website and downloadable apps for Apple or Android devices. You're welcome to join me at the building, 8 and 6 most days. Do get in touch if you're coming any distance, just in case I'm not here on that occasion. By Zoom, code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page, live streaming on Facebook and audio on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of mercy and truth. O God, will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm indeed this evening is number 50. You'll find the psalms at the back of the book. Psalm 50. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. The Lord, the most mighty God, has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not keep silence. Consuming fire goes out before him and a mighty tempest stirs about him. He calls the heaven above, and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful, who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, O Israel, for I am God your God. I will not reprove you for your sacrifices, for your burnt offerings are always before me. I will take no bull out of your house, nor he goat out of your folds, for all the beasts of the forest are mine the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains, and the insect of the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine, and all that fills it. Do you think that I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and fulfil your vows to God most high. Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you shall honour me. But to the wicked, says God, why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips? <clears throat> Since you refuse to be disciplined, and have cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you made friends with him, and you threw in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil, and harnessed your tongue to deceit. You sit and speak evil of your brother, you slander your own mother's son. These things have you done, and should I keep silence? Did you think that I am even such a one as yourself? But no, I must reprove you, and set before your eyes the things that you have done. You that forget God, consider this well, lest I tear you apart, and there is none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honours me, and to those who keep my way will I show the salvation of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Let's 
from Prayer our first reading, to the Song of the Holy City, turning back in our books to evening prayer on Tuesday in ordinary time. I saw the Holy City coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the Holy City, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away, and the one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. First reading is Judges 4, 1-23. Judges, I think you'll find, comes after Joshua at the beginning of the history section of the Hebrew Scriptures after the first five books. Joshua then Judges. We're looking for chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 1 to 23. Chapter 4 is the large number at the head of the paragraph or in the margin, and the verse numbers are the small numbers in the text. Judges 4 from 1. The Israelites gained what was evil in the sight of the Lord after it had died, so the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Can Canaan, who reigned in Hazar, the commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harosheth Hagaim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for 20 years. At that time, Deborah, prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take position on Mount Tamar, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Naphtali, General Javin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go, but if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and 10,000 warriors went up behind him, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber the Kenite had separated from the other Kenites, that is the descendants of Hobab, the father of Moses, and had encamped as far away as Elon Bezananim, which is near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abinam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera called out all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, to all the troops who were with him, from Harasheth Ha'goim to the Wadi Kishon. Then Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day on which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. The Lord is indeed going out before you. So Barak went down from Mount Tabor, with 10,000 warriors following him, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and all his army to a panic before Barak. Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot, while Barak pursued the chariots and the army to Harosheth Ha'goem. All the army of Sisera fell by the sword. No one was left. Now Sisera had fled away on foot to the tent of jail wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between King Jabin of Hazor and the clan of Heber the Kenite. Jael came out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, have no fear. So he turned aside to her into the tent, and she covered him with a rug. Then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. He said to her, Stand at the entrance of the tent, and if anybody comes and asks, Is anyone here? Say no. But Jael, wife of Heber, took a tent peg and uh, took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple until it went down to the ground. He was lying fast asleep from weariness, and he died. Then Barak came in pursuit of Sisera. Jael went out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. So she went into her tent, and there was Sisera lying dead with the tent peg in his temple. On that day God subdued King Jabin of Canaan before the Israelites. <clears throat> so what's um, a little bit odd, I think, about this story, one of the things, um, is that uh, we're told that God's people are not living right, and so things were going wrong for them, and they were being oppressed by a neighbouring um, king, monarch. And um, we're told that Deborah is uh, the judge at the time. But there's nothing here about anybody saying sorry or asking God for help. We're just told that uh, Deborah tells Barak... Um, that he's going to use Barak to overthrow the oppressing people with their military might. And uh, that king says, well, yes, I will go, but uh, only if you go with me. So Deborah says, well, a woman will king your, kill your enemy um, and say so you won't get the glory yourself. 
I would have expected there to be an insert in here somewhere saying um, God's people were oppressed, but they cried out to God, and God therefore said that he would um, sort them out after they'd made a peace offering, and um, he would uh, then tell Deborah how everything would be resolved. But it just goes straight from God's people being oppressed, and it's almost as if God, out of God's grace and mercy, just decides that they've had enough, enough is enough, and tells Deborah to pronounce this. And... Uh, So the oppressing king falls asleep in a tent of uh, an ally. He thinks it's an ally, but actually that, um, a woman from that tribe kills him while he's asleep. So I'm not really quite sure where, how, where and how we apply that, if any way at all, except that God can sometimes work just like that, out of God's sovereign grace to sort things out for us. Recognises and knows that things aren't right. And uh, we just might perhaps, if uh, God is ready to get us to do something for God, to be ready to do it and rely on God's strength, not on the strength of others, uh, unless we're prepared to uh, live humbly as God uses some other remedy. Luke 13, 10 to 21, then is our next Bible reading. Luke is the third of the Gospels, so if you're following the Bible off the shelf, turn to two thirds of the way through. You'll find Matthew, the Gospel, turn towards the back, Matthew, Mark, and then Luke. We have the large number 13 at the head of the paragraph this time, chapter 13, and the small numbers in the text, verses 10 to 21. Luke 13, 10 to 21, you'll find if you scroll on also. Now, Jesus was teaching around the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When, she had, when he had laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader, leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from a manger, and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. He said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like, and what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that someone took and showed, sowed in a garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And again he said, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. So two quite distinct sections in our um, gospel reading, or our second reading today. The first about a woman being healed, and the second about some uh, parables or allegories of the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God, rather. So um, this is a, a story which may be a bit of a muddle. We've got a woman bound by an ailment of 18 years duration. Is she the same woman as the woman that was healed in the crowd as Jesus was making his way to the synagogue leader? Or is she a different woman? If so, what is it about 18 years? Uh, and I don't know the answer to that. It just dawned on me because we've had that woman's story recently. And it was, she was 18 years and the, the, the daughter, the um, synagogue ruler's daughter was eight. So I know that eight is uh, eternity. We've got seven days of the week. And if you go back round to the first day and count it as eight, we've gone round in a complete loop and circle, a ring, and so 18 may be a figurative figure uh, and talk about rejuvenation and uh, life in death and continuity. She's a woman, and uh, so she's sort of second grade, as many of different genders find themselves second or third grade in our own day after men. She is bent double, so she's um, a crippled woman or a woman with a disability to boot. And she is around the rabbi, um, to whom only fully physically well men should have been able to present themselves. And uh, on the Sabbath day, he touches her and she stands up straight, having said, you are set free from ailment. 
He doesn't say anything about sin on this occasion. Elsewhere, when he heals, he marries those two ideas together. That the sin which may or may not have caused the disability is forgiven and to prove that he can do that, the, the physical restoration follows on. But he does go on to say, well, I've healed this person who's a daughter of Abraham and yet you yourselves will untie your livestock or draft animals um, so that they may be fed and watered on what should be a rest day. And uh, the crowds, we are told, the entire crowd rejoiced at everything he did and said, I guess, he was making mockery of those people who were a bit self-important. So that's one story, one thought train. And then we move on to something quite different. Some uh, sort of, I was going to say one-liners, but three or four-liners about the kingdom of God. So kingdom just means area of rule, and there are all sorts of reasons why we just have to say kingdom and be done with it. The male and uh, imperial connotations, I think we just have to hold. And uh, God here, that's okay, um, as uh, an expression. Um, kingdom of heaven is another expression that's used. But it's where, where God, where heaven has authority, rule, agency, traction. What is it like when God is in charge? Well, it's like a mustard seed growing to become a tree. It's unseen, and yet in the end it grows and then it becomes apparent. And uh, so we've just had this healing of this woman. Um, there wasn't any great uprising, but elsewhere and later on, God's activity and the activity of the disciples is such that the authorities feel they need to put it down. And then we've got another equivalent um, allegory. The rule of the deity is like yeast mixed with three measures of flour till it's leavened. Why we've got three measures of flour here, I don't know. Three is another God number. Trinity, magic number, first prime. Do those measures of flour mean anything? Um, I'm sure many people have read into them. What those, why we have three measures. Um, but yeast likewise does its job and yeast sometimes is deemed to be a bad thing but here it's a good thing because it's related to an image, an idea of overthinking about God. Sourdough, we've got so many microbes and organisms living in and around us if we breathe and eat and in our guts that are healthy and helpful that we can just leave flour on the side and it'll turn into bread just in the same way as we can just put grapes Champagne grapes in a bottle, and uh, after a few months, it turns into fizzy pop. Just extraordinary how much life there is in the world, even despite all the pollution and uh, global warming and death and toxins that we pour into it as humanity. May God be praised. So we turn then on to our responsory backing evening prayer in ordinary time. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. The Song of Mary. Have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. Father, Son, Spirit, one in three, three in one, we come to you at the end of this day and we look back on those moments where we've been inspired and filled, healed, changed, improved through teaching, through learning, through time with friends and colleagues that are blessed, a blessing that we have blessed, where we have rested or been creative, where things have gone well, where we've had good news and we thank you for all those enabling, inspiring, energising experiences. And we give you thanks to the basis of them. We also look back over the day and recognise there might have been times of testing and trial, of pain and hurt and exclusion. Our own voices, our own responsibilities and addictions may have uh, destabilised, derailed, diverted us from the people we would be. 
And so we pray for healing or restoration in your provision. Turning to Release International, we pray for Renala, who is in I know, it's a place in Punjab, Pakistan. There is somebody there called Ala Ditta, who is a Christian. They were shot dead by people accused of, he accused of stealing from his orchard. We pray for his family, that Allah's killers who threat to kill them if they go to the police. Turning to Christian AIDS prayer diary, we pray for the world, no, we pray for teachers and youth workers, equipping young people to tackle the challenges of tomorrow, which are the challenges of today. In my view, the Joint Public Issues Team prayer for Ukraine includes the words, God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine and indeed any military interventions anywhere. In a world you made for peace and flourish, and we lament the use of armed force. With some world news, we pray for all those who lost their lives in the Indian train disaster and all who are recovering. Pray for those who uh, lost their lives on the um, immigrant boat and those who are recovering. And uh, for those still lost in the uh, submersible on that uh, Titanic cruise, we pray they might be found healthy, safe and well. Suffolk Diocese Prayer Diary invites us to pray for St Edmundsbury Cathedral and their staff. Joe, Philip, Matthew, Michael, Anita, Ka uh, Jutta, Jutta, Chris, and they have a reader, Caitlin, and the children and families, ministers, Fiona and Adrian. We pray your blessing on all of them, that they may work well with you and as a team and as a community, and you build and grow them in their faith and in the work you're doing through them in that place. We pray for clergy and readers with permission to officiate in the diocese and thank God for their ministries. So these are they who are over a certain age. And we pray especially for those in our valley here, namely Dana, Wynn, David, Vic, Jonathan. And we pray, pray for Bariki, who is a parish pastor of Kanaz Parish in Kagera Diocese. May he be inspired as he sees your healing power in operation through him, even if it causes challenge to the established powers and authorities in his neck of the woods. We pray for the people and businesses associated with Hales Road, Road Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wizard Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Halton Road in and around our market town of Halesworth today. Those businesses, we pray that they will thrive and prosper and make the right decisions that they, uh, in relation to their business, research and development, advertising, what to pay for staff and uh, supplies, what to charge for products. And uh, we pray that they may continue to contribute to the local economy. People and businesses based in living in those places where things are a struggle, we pray that they will find the help they need and be humble to receive when it's offered. And where things are going well, may people turn to you with thanksgiving and uh, be part of the answer and not the problem in those communities associated with those addresses. We pray a special blessing with Peter, Felicity, Paul, Ron, Jean, Francis, Joan, Valerie, Graham, Carol, John, Richard, Anita, uh, sorry, Anna, Sheila, Margaret, Adrian, and others we may know for whom life is difficult at the moment. We pray that you'll act in sovereign grace, just as you did with that woman with the um, bent over for 18 years, and just as you did um, in that first story in the Hebrew Scriptures where your people were oppressed, and you just acted, we pray that you will do that for these for whom we pray. And we thank you for all this good in the lives of Mary, Thelma, Dave, Linda, John, Maggie, John, Jackie. Just uh, adjusting my list because I think the John that we just prayed for for uh, provision uh, might be this uh, same or another John that has just died. So we've got two or three Johns in there now. <coughs> and um, so we thank you for all the good in their lives. We give thanks for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, all whose years might have at this time and those who served you faithfully here. We ask that to God your promises to humanity grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom and we pray that we will hear your inspired words spoken through your incarnate mouth by the breath of your spirit and that as we do that brings light in our darkness and order in our chaos.
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We collect for Tuesday evening from the book Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening and day is drawing to a close. Abide with us and with your whole church in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us and with all your faithful ones, O Lord, in time and in eternity. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.